and I was working at City Palace Jaipur and I happened to go into the Zanana section. So I found it on the floor, like a turquoise finish, which was like really shiny on the floor, on the ceiling, on the walls. So it just like caught my eye and I took it up as a research for my thesis as well. But that was just still introduction then what I'm trying to do and achieve here. Um, so um, Araish is a fine line plaster which is used in Jaipur since early 16th century. And it's not just predominantly in like Jaipur or even limited to Rajputs. It's actually, um, it belongs, like it goes till Mughal, Sikh, Bundelas, it's, it's everywhere in our country. But the practices are still like, the knowledge systems are predominantly in Jaipur right now. And uh, the technique and the application evolved from just a plaster finish and then it evolved to as a base for paintings and because Araish is a finish that it, the pa when it's painted on a wet surface, so it stays for a very long time. As in it, like it becomes almost like you can't remove it. So the term is Persian, which means decoration and it adds glossy sheen to the surface and the painted version is also in Rajasthan, like it's the local term for it, it's called alagila. And it's got many applications from ceiling, columns, walls and flooring material. The Araish technique materials application, like this is what I found as a problem during, like after my thesis. So the techniques varied from each craftsman. The application procedure, the materials they were using, and the the results were like in ranging in, t in terms of color, shine, finish, durab uh, durability, and even the life of the material. So even while understanding the defects of Araish, I found out that as we understand how plasters are, plasters are just a sacrificial layer, or I would say protective layer to the main structure. So once the surface has actually deteriorated, the only way out is to change it completely, like to remove it completely and um, redo it. So for that, the process becomes very important, the process of redoing the surface again. So the final outcome which I realized was not the same quality and as the what was historic, which, is bef like, which was before that. And there is like a high need for scientific research and analysis to understand this composition because as far as I understand that most of us depend on the craftsman knowledge and most of us assume that Araish is, okay, Araish karna hai yaha par. That's the how we go about it. And the craftsman goes uh, from his own experience, he's just putting it on the surface. But are we producing the same finish? That was the biggest question like I'm struggling with. So the scope of work is documenting the properties used application of Araish finishes in 16th to 17th century through like listing of buildings, site surveys, and sample collections. So actually documenting it in terms of physical properties of the material. And if I could collect samples, then I'm going to chemically test them. Then documenting various processes in Araish, like whichever the craftsmen are actually following, and uh, understanding where they are, what all um, materials they are using, how they're using it, and how, like, what are the applications of it, and then chemically testing the, both the things together to understand whether are we producing the same level. Um, so this strategy which I'm trying to follow here, here is doing a historical research, which uh, I'm looking at parallel finishes during the same time period, because there was something called gachkari, which is a Persian term where gypsum was used, and the finish is quite similarish. Um, then the sources of knowledge from craftsmen, sources of knowledge through buildings, and then analyzing the two and drawing conclusions out of it. So Araish is a trifold component. It's done in three layers. There are two base coats, which is kara and jiki, and the, the kara is lined with coarse mar marble powder. Jiki is lined with fine marble powder. And the, the fineness Araish, the final coat, is uh, just pure lime finish. So it is prepared using non-hydraulic lime, which is leaked for, like it ranges from six months to a year or maybe more, like better, like, longer you slake it, it's be the better the quality of lime is. And it's laked with curd and jaggery to um, give, uh, as in, to increase the plasticity and waterproofing quality of the product. Um, then lime putty is actually mixed during the preparation, it's mixed with buttermilk and then marble dust and shell powder in some cases, which I found out, is used, mixed, and then eventually it's pol polished with a, a gate stone. And uh, after that, it's um, coconut oil extracts are used to actually shine the surface. So the phys physical characteristics are the thickness is one to two mm, which is the final coat. 
um, the color is basically white with additives. So there are additives which range, and they are organic additives. The appearance is fine and glossy finish. It reflects like mirror, and it's mostly used for internal surfaces like walls, columns, flooring, ceiling, etc. And it's got a li long life. So the Arayash in Nahargarh is almost, I think, 400 years, or I think 300 to 400 years old. So I'm over here. I'm just trying to show where all it was used. The right one image is from Bhar uh, Bharatpur, one of the hammams there. So it was even used in like places where wet surface, wet areas were there. There are. It's mostly used as dado. It's used um, in royal places as flooring as well, um, because earlier times people used to walk barefooted, so the life was longer. The possible outcomes which I'm looking towards is one is informed understanding of application in terms of techniques and finish and variations in Arayash, then determining the composition of prime layer and the base layers of the surfaces, whether, whether it's a wall, if it's a flooring, if it's a ceiling, that, and understanding the physical features of the finish with respect to different compositions and applications. So the challenges which are there that mostly it's oral traditions passed on from the guru to the shishya and so we have to depend on the knowledge system of the craftsmen and their techniques. The tech tests would be limited samples in terms of samples produced by the craftsmen and the, take the ones taken from the site. And the organic additives especially are difficult to, det like to determine in from the tests. And uh, there are limited historical sources uh, and the understanding of parallel finishes such as gaj uh, gachkari, vajralep is like if I could find written records on them. That's it. Thank you.